place, but that's neither here nor there as we are in the game number two. And we're gonna find out if FlyQuest can pick up their second win of the season. Well, we'll see what changes here in the draft. At least Fiora and Galio banned by FlyQuest. Yeah, so on the blue hands. side, uh, yep. <laughs> getting, uh, getting some top lane picks out of the way. Zach, Caitlyn, and uh, not Galio, I guess, because it was banned by FlyQuest. There's Cassidy, though. Banned again on the blue side here. This time taken away from Keen. LeBlanc is the last pick. Taking task despite losing on it, still respecting the power of the champion. And surprise, surprise, first pick Elise. Yeah, first pick Elise does go over, but you're playing against a very good Lee Sim player, so I never feel like it's as big of a deal personally. Um, that is why we've seen a lot of teams, you know, while this is pretty common, we've seen a lot of teams also focus on things like Gragas that can be a flex, and you can kind of adjust your draft accordingly. Uh, because you could grab Gragas, put him top or jungle, and if you don't like that matchup, then you can obviously uh, just grab one of the other junglers. Well, we'll see exactly what Dig want to go for. There is Lee Sin for Shrimp, and might even steal away the Triss. I actually don't mind this at all for Dignitas. Was very effective for Wild Turtle. I think it's generally a good pick, so gonna take that one away with Caitlyn Bad again. Poor man's Caitlyn was my description of Triss last game, so gonna get it here. Yeah, and, and Triss is going to be rising in popularity, it feels like. Works so well with the new build, uh, with the IE plus Shiv Rapid Fire Cannon. Uh, when you hit that three item spike, you are ridiculously strong. Has extremely strong scaling to late game. Uh, and while you can compare team fight wise, it does kind of similar things. You're relatively safe. You have a, you know, kind of a, a gap closer to be able to jump away and keep yourself safe. But it's very different in the lane, right? Tristana is not a, a bully AD carry. You lose lane to a lot of different champions and uh, it's more about sieging, it's more about pushing rather than it is about harassing your opponents. And that's something that Caitlyn kind of excels at, where it's just not. And I do like it, especially with Brom. So I like that Flyquits are taking here. I think it makes sense for total play style. It's a very stable champion for elimination to have. And looks like they actually are going to set up something similar here. First three picks are going to be the exact same here in game two for FlyQuest, and we'll see exactly where Dig are going with their next phase of the draft as Morgana again for Big will round out that duel lane. We do not have parity among the picks, so the mid lane was already picked here from FlyQuest. They're going to be very likely banning some of the bad matchups for Orianna, things like perhaps the Lucian and the Syndra could be getting banned in this next phase, whereas Dignitas likely will look for their advantage through AD carry bans. If you target some of the stronger AD carries uh, that Wild Turtle could use in conjunction with the Braum, maybe you can kind of get that 2v2 advantage I'm um, taking things out like the Varus and the Ash, for example. Yep, I think Dignitas smartly banning bot lane is here, but I'm very curious to see which mid lane is, if any, FlyQuest ban away. There's actually okay. a Shen ban. They're continuing to target someday. That's three top lane bans already on the FlyQuest side. Yeah, and they can continue to go down that route. I am a little bit surprised that they're not going to be targeting some of the picks uh, for mid lane, but they may not be worried about Keen playing them. You sometimes can have that experience and not feel that they play the counter picks well enough or that they don't really have them in their wheelhouse. Uh, we'll see if Keen is going to be able to prove high wrong or if he even wants to run something like that. Because that being said, uh, their composition is not set up super well to run something like a Lucian mid because if you do lock that in now, you're almost all physical damage. Morgana, while AP is not a significant damage source with the types of builds that people go and pro play. So then you would need an AP top laner like something uh, along the lines of Rumble. Uh, so FlyQuest could even target something like that. And, and I think that's more what their their idea is here. You ban out the Syndra and you say, hey, I don't actually care if you play Lucian mid uh, because that will make your composition pretty poor. Yep, so kind of two different solo lane bans there for FlyQuest, Callista ban for Dig though. One other thing that's pretty cool about this is you could actually pick away the opposite side of the, the part, right? So if you say, okay, well, Rumble works well if you play it in conjunction with, with Lucian and this isn't actually going to happen, then FlyQuest could have stolen away the other half of that yep. and kind of ruined their comp. So I think that the FlyQuest pick ban is actually super intelligent the more I think about it. Yep, and there's Talia actually for Dig. So again, another decent matchup for Keen there in the mid lane. Not a counter strictly, but Talia is so strong early. A lot of players tend to like it into Orianna because Orianna doesn't do a whole lot early on in a 1v1. It's kind of a matter of where FlyQuest going. Flash a Twitch quickly there for Turtle, which would make some sense in the style of comp they're building, but a blind pick top laner is required, and the answer is almost always Renekton. Yeah, Renekton just really does not have a lot of bad matchups. Like, the only ones uh, that can be pretty tough for him are not really things that are seen in pro play. You know, things uh, that are much more risky, right? Uh, so we're not likely to see that. There are obviously answers. We are going to see a hyper carry here for Turtle. Uh, something that works very well in conjunction with Braum here too. Because you have so much attack speed uh, with that W pop, you can almost instantly proc the Braum passive, land that stun, and that can be a pretty powerful uh, duo. The question now is, what does Dignitas run in the top lane? Do they just go back to a tank, you know, something like Gragas, and just kind of live through that lane? Or are they going to play something more aggressive? 
And they're going for a rumble. They actually are going for a rumble. So damage profile is a little curious here, but last pick by Sunday is more of an aggressive laner, and that's like counter pick choice into Renekton. Always feels scary to me to play any somewhat Gucci top laner into at least Renekton or at least in Renekton, but Dignitas probably confident they can manage that. Shrimp in some days 2v2 has looked very good on that side of the map. And you'll always have to be aware of the fact that Keen can have the push advantage and roam up top with that uh, level 6 on Talia. So that's definitely something that they could be looking to exploit as well. Um, it's also, you're, you're in this position now with Dignitas where you have no real front line. Uh, and they're they're running this composition that is going to be very fragile. If they can get ahead, it can look very strong. But if you get behind against something like this, like it's so easy to find the initiation. You know, with the Orianna, you have the Orianna plus the Renekton Braum frontline. Like that is a very beefy frontline. If they can keep the Kogma protected, that can be very powerful. But you know, Kogma can be vulnerable to dive here too when you layer in uh, the Rumble ultimate when you dive in with the Lee Sin, so we'll see which team is going to be able to kind of better pull this off. I would say in general, I like that FlyQuest are kind of going back to basics here, picking much more standard, picking very straightforward team comps that they feel that they can succeed with. I feel like kind of the opposite is true for Dignitas, their individual talent seems so high, but this feels like another kind of wonky patch together team comp. I think their last draft had a little more cohesion and that still maybe had some holes in it. Talia Rumble Lee Sin is a bit of a weird one, but I mean, the picks are strong enough that if especially they can get an advantage in the mid game, should be able to snowball from there, but it doesn't feel as cohesive to me. I, I agree, and I, I felt the same way kind of about the draft in the first game where it feels like they're more saying, oh, I like this matchup. Oh, well, I like this matchup too. Okay, great. Oh, what does our team do? Oh, okay. Uh, that's unfortunate, you know? Yep. Um, but you can make that work. It's just more of, it feels like a, a win lane, win game type of, of team. Um, that being said, you know, you, you have so many threats that they can team fight, and, and the fact that Wild Turtle is on a low mobility AD carry can make him pretty vulnerable. Uh, you know, you can just try to threaten the dive uh, because they don't have that much consistent DPS if Turtle is kind of shoved out of the Yeah, play. I wonder if we'll see quite as many flashes forward from Turtle this game. Probably not. Probably not. I certainly hope not, but uh, get really fed. I've been, I've been uh, surprised before as Flaco is actually invading here. Oh, this is actually really smart. Uh, Dignitas has not spotted this invade. They're gonna wrap around from behind. Down shrimp again. Oh. Forced to take safeguard level one, so it does hop to a ward. I think he actually trinket there too. might have been fine, but he didn't want to risk it at all. Uh, obviously, not ideal to be starting safeguard, but he will still be able to clear. Uh, gonna need a leash probably though. A start one of his own buffs, and, and that will be able to, to make it pretty okay. It looks like maybe another blue Grump start there for Shrimp. And Moon's going to mix it up here on the right-hand side of the map. And, and another little thing, this is why people say you do not level up a skill until you actually need to. So don't just walk out of the map and automatically level up your Q. Uh, you can reactively level them up for things like invades or if you see a great opportunity to see someone, see, see someone at level 1 and you kill them. Uh, that's why the pro players do that. and That's something that you can utilize in your games here too, but we're gonna see uh, the kind of super leash. Moon is gonna be starting up on the little raptors and the red buff's already being leashed for him. Uh, then he can go back and kill off the big raptor there. And uh, this is gonna give him a very accelerated start. They know Shrimp is already gonna be behind the pace a little bit because he had to start W. Uh, so Moon should be off to the races yep. a bit faster. Dignitas do have a ward there though, so they know the opening of Moon's play and they, I think you pretty much can see that he's going towards the left-hand side of the map. So. Should have a good idea of what's going on, so we'll see if Moon can find a surprising gank angle, or if he just even wants to keep farming things out and just take the lead that he's already got. Yeah, you, you can even look to kind of try to shove in top lane very heavily, uh, and if you can make that reset, you can look to threaten uh, ganks very easily here, get some control on the top side, take out the scuttle. Uh, but Shrimp is clearing towards top side as well, so uh, certainly something that can be matched. Central invade there also, but Moon stops by for the Scuttle Crab, so looks like he's just going to play it safe and go for maybe fast level 4. That's kind of the other option here. He gets it super, super speedily. Might be able to just brute force a gank with the experience and buff advantage that he has coming out of the jungle. So it's been great to see so many different efficient jungle paths kind of being discovered, and players and teams are finally starting to fully utilize them.
And I think it's very smart, right? Because a lot of pro players play so heavily around timings, knowing that at X time, uh, the player can arrive in your lanes, you ward at this time, you play defensively at this time. But when you do these leashes, when you throw off those timings, uh, it makes people question it. You don't have to do it every time to put it in their mind, right? It's the same principle with, that CLG kind of has with some of their crazy level ones, where they're not going to do a crazy level one every game, but if they do it every once in a while, you always have to be worried that they could be doing. You have to give more respect. You have to change your play style. Moon now looking for Keen here, who does not have cleanse, by the way. Yep, looks like Kane's gonna be lined up, but Moon Flash Cocoon does land in. High gonna chase forward. That should be first blood. Red buff might be enough. High Flash autos forward. It's gonna force out the heal. Uh, that looked like Moon was trying to donate the first blood over to High. I think maybe uh, underestimating how hard it was gonna be to get that kill. It felt like he could have actually perhaps gone forward and continued to chase down Keen and gotten that kill himself. We'll have to watch it again. To really see though. Yeah, Moon, did you see the splash? Keen with no summoners could be a vulnerability as Bolt is getting real low in this 1v1. Looks like it's time for him to go home. Spend yeah. some of that money. He's gonna have to go back to base and uh, someday will, if he, if he so chooses, uh, be able to kind of stay there and actually delay his ball's base even more. So that means he can fully shove in the wave and then base and walk back to lane without really losing anything uh, and saving his TP. So that is pretty nice for them. Landing doesn't hit turtle. A shrimp is now down to the bottom side of the map in a pretty interesting 2v2. A shrimp's gonna move down towards his bottom half. Does get spotted on a ward, but looks like he's not ganking in the bottom side just yet. Looking for a few camps, but can not find too much. So here's the play again, so let's see. You know, yeah, I definitely think he could have followed here. You follow with the repel. Oh, he, I think he was actually trying to maybe tank up the turret on the very edge of it and he stepped just too far out. So either way, certainly messed up on the execution. Had he repelled in for that kill, I think they actually get it. Uh, but perhaps thought that it was secured, wanted to give that first blood over to high. Well, instead, again, Keen is going to summon us. We'll have to see if a revisit is imminent at all. You have to remember, though, high. He spent his flash too, right? So double flash down. Uh, it's not really that much in, in, in their advantage. Yes, in this isolated lane it is, but uh, you're using two of those longer cooldown spells. And Keen is about halfway back to having that heal. So they're going to be looking for the repeat gank. Shrimp is in the area. We'll see if they can actually pull it off. Hi, I'm not sure too close to level six. They're actually pretty close. Never mind. Two more creeps required. Make it two more, I think. Keen is playing very intelligently to the bot side. That is where their vision is in the uh, jungle. And Shrimp up here. Balls is very far up. He could easily get run down, but he is level six and somebody is not, so. Balls getting out of there as well as another aggressive engage breaking out on the bottom side of the map. These romping has been really nice against some Morgana as Big's trying to find these bindings. And Turtle doing a nice job getting out of the way and then still trading to make sure he doesn't just concede the lane. Yeah, and, and Big just making sure that the lane was fully reset there. His AD is going to base, so he wants to stay around to harass them, and that's why they're going for these split backs and into the top lane. Balls actually already burned his ultimate, so does Someday trying to keep them out of the way, but Balls going to chase them down in towards the brushes. Someday just playing ring around the Rosie. And now it's a flash out of the way. You know what to move with the cocoon point blank. It's good first spot though. Goes over to Sunday and Shrimp is here for the counter kill. Keen roams up as well. And that's two for Dignitas. Sunday with the 1v2. He actually gets a solo kill onto Moon there, who was flashless after that mid lane gank. So they do get punished. And that was so well played. Buying all the time. Getting into overheat before flashing back in and finishing off this very squishy Elise who's only on Moby boots. Yeah, very gank happy there for Moon going for the super early boots of mobility and Shrimp still with ultimate. Gonna tag high, but Keen not in position to follow up. So I just gonna put the shield on and walk <laughs> out of the way as Altec and Lemonation doing battle. Lemon actually just trying to hold the wave there, so that, that looks pretty funny. But he's trying to save that CS for his opponent. Here is the top lane play. Lairs down the equalizer, he's buying more time. Moon actually walking over it, taking a lot of damage there, and that is what allows somebody he gets into overheat, flashes forward right onto Moon and takes him out. Shrimp flying in, allows them to get that second kill. And back to back, pretty poorly executed ganks here from Moon. Could have got first blood mid lane, did not. Then goes top, that gets messed up and donates over a kill. Ultimately there from high as well, but just kind of chunking down Kane as high did actually get shoved back into the rocks. Crimp here again, so 
Still the ultimate looking for a good place to use it, but Dignitas going to roam down to red side. Yeah, exactly. And, and this has been set up by Big, because he just got Vision around here, drops a pink ward, drops a couple of those regular wards as well around, so they know that they are safe to make this invade and extend that advantage. And this is the teamwork that is required to make these plays safely. Yes, Shrimp could just blind invade, but that is not really a a smart play. Uh, so Big going to be able to set that up because they know that Lumber Nation went back to base. So it's all kind of this chain of events that allows them to do these plays. It does feel like Dignitas feeling a little bit more together here in the early stages of this game. 600 gold up is nice, but the CS looking pretty clean across the board. Those two kills helping out with some additional gold over. But FlyQuest again, going to be kind of in a similar spot as far as their game plan goes. Just want to make sure things go about the same as they did before and then Try and find some team fights as the mid game rolls around. As long as they're not too far behind, things should be okay. Yeah, certainly should be. But there is a lot of pushing power in this TikTok squad, so they're definitely going to have to be careful uh, if these guys get too far ahead. It certainly can start to snowball. And it's, it's one of those things where if Wild Turtle can stay alive and be safe in the fight to really pump out the damage, uh, then yes, FlyQuest is going to be very strong. But if you know this Rumble and Lee Sin get very, very strong, can just dive and take him out right off the bat. Uh, FlyQuest is probably not going to have enough damage left in the tank. Yeah, so we'll see exactly how the rest of this game develops. Dignitas actually continuing to build a lead. Up about 1,000 gold now. FlyQuest going back to get some, spend some of their money. High returns to mid lane with a blue buff. Almost has that first item completed. Looks like Kane's going to go ahead and grab his as well as Turtle. Just playing Farmville here in the bottom side. Really not a whole lot to do for Turtle. Just wants to make sure he gets as many minions as possible, but Moon being diligent, checking the objective. Seems like Dick and Tuss are likely going to move for something soon, whether it's a turret, whether it's a gank, whether it's just one of the big objectives on the map. Well, and Shrimp kind of has all the options in the world because he's been tracking Moon with his vision. They know exactly where he is. Uh, so he's going to have the first crack at, at making a play, right? And sitting on Pink Ward now, uh, they even know, generally speaking, where Moon warded. So he's setting up shop here. All right, Moon's gonna come back down. Shrimp, let's get the slowdown. Moon able to flash out of the way as he comes down from the rappel. Once again, it's a little advantage, all taken from the vision control. Because Moon is having to walk back into his side of the jungle without any vision. Now, another return, and he can just continue to defend this. Yep. Looking to fight heavily for it. Wait for the cocoon. Oh. Really good patience there from Shrimp at high. With no ultimate, use it to burst down King before. Could be in a bit of trouble. Shrub's gonna miss, though. High able to use the heal and run out of the way. Really good stuff here from Shrimp. It's such a, a good game to see how you can really exploit that vision, how you can take over uh, your opponent with that support jungle synergy that they are showing. Uh, it's just so, so well done by them. And with the bot lane pushing, with top lane pushing, you can make these plays happen that much more easily because it's so hard for your opponents to actually respond without just giving up too many creeps. Yeah, Dignitas finally going to convert that kill into a bit more objective pressure as Shrimp's going to comfortably solo down the mountain drake here with the warrior enchantment already finished. Pretty clean take and that should help dig in whatever their next adventure may be. Shrimp's still not done either. King going to join forces once more and force Moon off this raptor camp. Yeah, and he has a smite advantage, takes that away, they even get almost all the little ones. Uh, to make things, you know, go from bad to worse for Moon. The Moby Boots build is also one where uh, it's considered much more of a snowballing type of style, you know? You have to move around the map, get these kills, really kind of keep the pressure rolling. Otherwise, you're extremely squishy, you don't really have uh, much use in teamfight with this sort of build. Like, he has no AP, he has no tanky stats, right? So it's this investment for early success and it has not paid off at all so far for Moon. Certainly not. Again, things are looking okay, but those two deaths have kind of described how the early attempts from Moon have gone. Turtle continues to farm up a storm here in the bottom lane. He's got 1,800 gold casually in the bank. But it looks like Altex finally gone back. He's actually got Infinity Edge already finished. And Turtle's going to go back and probably get his first major item. So not a whole lot of action on the bottom side in the lane for Dignitas, but certainly around the jungle, they've been playing well to just continue to press their lead. And despite TS being close in almost every lane, it's the total pressure that Dignitas are getting that's really giving them the lead they currently sit on. 
But, uh, you know, back back to what we talked at the start of the game, FlyQuest is, is not super worried yet, right? They're, they're not massively behind in gold. Yes, their jungler is falling high, but they have kind of an easier to execute team fight composition. So they will certainly have their chances as long as their laners uh, do stay relevant in farm, and they have done that so far. You know, Blade of the Rune King is going to be finished from Turtle here to kind of match up against that Infinity Edge. And Kog'Maw does have extremely strong skilling too, uh, although Kog'Maw's power is more windowed because it's all around your W being up. Because that's again, continuing to stay aggressive, tag onto Lemonation by Shrimp. And I'll take, might even get first turret as well. I mean, Dignitas did have a good start to the early game last game, but up to another good one here. A few more autos required, but I'll take, yeah, maybe afraid of taking turret aggro there. So, you know, wait for a wave, but Moon's joining down to make it a 3v3 here in the bot lane. Yeah, but in that 3v3, you have to feel like they could just push up, black shield your AD carry, and finish that off. So we'll see if they're going to go for it. Yeah, Rim's to lead down as well. There's a wall out from Kane, jumps off early. So they just need to clear the wave out. Kane trying to get some poke in, but wave is now gone. Dignitas going to have to wait even further. Yeah, they will have to back off here, and High going to be able to clear out that pink ward, perhaps try to zone Kane a little bit, keep him away from that CS as he does come back. Looks like Sunday even stole away the blue buff from the top side because he's sitting on that, so well done by him to utilize the push advantage that he has to kind of go and get something else done. Yeah, good lot of early strength, just shoving in constantly. Actually, two levels ahead of balls. So again, despite that CS being even, Sunday is quite a bit stronger as balls does now just hit level 10. Yeah, the experience is a bit concerning. You know, level up in jungle, level up in mid lane, level up in top side. Your AD is a level up here too. Um, experience gives you so many free stats when you do hit those breakpoints, uh, especially you know, hitting the alternate breakpoints, you know, like that level 11. Uh, it's really going to put you out of position of power. Again, burning that ultimate just to sort of keep a Dignitas member out of the way. He's been burning it on Keen in trade and then use it on Trent to dissuade him from diving. Looks like he's pretty low on mana, so something going to roam down and he's a pretty good opportunity to try and take this mid turret or at least pressure high away from it. Did not check the pixel brush in the river, so it was spotted out. Will at least clear up one of these wards, but the players have to be diligent about checking this vision. You know, the deep pink ward we pointed out that they got much earlier is still sitting in that uh, bush below FlyQuest red buff. That's something that you need to really make sure with your pathing, you're checking all these bushes because that gives you so much free uh, information, so much of an advantage when it stays around for this long. Yeah, it looks like Shrimp was able to clear that all out, but I. That's a little too far forward. He uses all his mana to burst down Trim because Lemon Nation's roaming up, but Vic's behind him. Yeah, Flyquest trying to force a play here. We'll see if they can pull it off. Black Shield there's great on King. Kickback from Trim's going to move forth into the turret. Lemon Nation there to protect his team, but here's the TP in from Someday. Ball. I is Oom. Going to burn that old thing. Could cancel there from Someday, I think. Someday could actually just kill the turret. That's very low. Grab first turret there, bud. But uh, is oh. going to base instead. Uh, that is. I think actually pretty poor from Sunday uh, to not grab that, that free first turret. You know, spending the teleport, that's fine. But if you're going to cancel it, you could actually stay around and finish that off and give yourself that big injection of gold. I guess he is perhaps favoring, you know, just the fact that he can deny more CS to the turret. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure you cash in on that. Oh, good move back in. Ignite down from Big, actually. This came for the last few threads, but I'm a nation, again, putting the unbreakable up and. I was kind of wondering exactly, you know, why is High struggling so much to wait for it? I forgot that Sunday stole his blue buff. Yeah. So even that little steal from Sunday has actually opened up a great amount of room. And as a result, Dignitas will take first turret, cracking down mid lane. Even giving the solo gold over to Keen there. So really prioritizing him. Uh, Sunday backing away to not share in that gold. Uh, Big does the same. There's somebody even not knocking down his own turret that he could have gotten first. So uh, really putting a lot of emphasis on this matchup, stealing away the blue being able to get in every edge that he could possibly want. Dignitas off to a great start now. 3,000 gold ahead after taking that turret. And there's two turrets that are very easily picked up here. Top lane and bot are both extremely low. Uh, so Dignitas definitely can look to make the rotations, force those turrets down. And we'll see if they can just pull that off. Because if you pick up all the outers when you already have this level of kind of this gold advantage, it really it can start to blow wide open. I mean, you could be at a five, five, six yep. thousand gold lead pretty early on. Took a lot about kind of effective value here when turrets are up, but you can take them. Obviously, you need to actually physically take them to get the benefits, but the contest lead certainly a, a bit bigger than the scoreline would indicate, given that they should be doing even more damage. And second Drake's gonna go over to them as well. First one was a mountain, that helps with the sieges. Second one's an infernal. 
That's going to help with the team fights as Altec did take the bottom out of Tarot. Balls is trying to enter here in the top lane, but Sunday says no. And you can see just how much control they have around the map when you can both go for an Infernal while you're sieging, while you're in the other lanes as well. Like, they're able to do a bit of everything uh, because they have controlled vision around the area, because they've had the pushing lanes and the, and the advantages uh, in item completion. And Shrimp is uh, full-time Red Side Jungle. Just invading Flycurch for the last 10 minutes. Keen actually gets the red buff as he walls back down. That was very awkward. Ooh, I think he actually knocked him off he of did. the ultimate wall. The Wild Turtle caught out here. We'll see if he can make it outplay. All right, he's going to try something. TP in, but Turtle's going to have to fight it out. Kick from Shrimp's going to seal that one. And Balls is here to try and get the kill back on the Shrimp. Damage is there. There's the shutdown from Balls. It's Lemonation. Too. We're going to chase down Keen. Lemonation is here to kill more autos. Ultimate's good. Tags him on the back end, but. Two melee champs chasing a Talia? I don't think so. Yeah, not too bad though. They at least get the shutdown. But that being said, Tristana is already topside. They knocked down the last outer. They're going to be pressuring the inner turret here too. Someday is shoving up mid. So uh, High has to make the decision. Does he go top? Does he stay mid? Uh, where does he actually look to defend? And for now, he will go top to clear that out. So back to the blue buff for Dig Toss. Going to take it away from High once again. Dig playing really well with their advantage here kind of know every spot they need to be in. I'll take going to go ahead and get the blue buff because he is down the bot side. And watch this one again. Despite the oopsie with the blast cone, Turtle uh, had nowhere good to go. Yeah, he, he's hoping to try to pull off some sort of outplay. I think he was looking to actually flash inside the minions. If he can get into the minions there, then the Lee Sin Q cannot actually follow up and maybe he can make a miracle happen as Red Action comes in. So I think that's what he's trying for. Either way, he gets enough damage that they get that kill back. But big. Alrighty. Gonna get caught out there, perhaps staying around a little bit too long, trying to get some of that vision. Looks like it. High gonna get credit for that kill. Assist there from Moon, so big, I think, warding in the wrong spot. But a minor setback for Gigantas at this point. Altec is still very far ahead as far as those early items go. Up on gold by total by almost a thousand. Looks like that static shot will be up soon as well. Watch how this one happened. Big made the Rift Herald angry for some reason, and High was like, yeah. Okay, they were actually just gonna go for the Rift Herald. The flash is pretty silly. I think they're from, from big, but uh, Shrimp was actually coming down, so was Altec. So it looked like they wanted to actually go for the Rift Herald, and he was just starting up that leash. Uh, proccing the, the damage on the back eye is actually most of how you kill off the Rift Herald, so support starting it isn't as silly as it may seem, but nice play there from High to catch him out and get a kill, and a Big probably should have just held on to the flash. Oh, there's another wall from King and a try and cut off Total. Actually knocks him back in towards the Morgana ulti. Oh. Very well played by Kane. A well-deserved kill. That no way out for Turtle there. Didn't have the flash. Used that in the bot lane play. And really nice from Keen. Walls him off. Big able to follow up there. Able to get a pretty easy kill on a Turtle. And now Dignitas clearing that vision around the Baron area. Now Rift Herald said goodbye. So I can kind of see why Big was in a hurry to get it started. But Dignitas again still grouping. Gonna try and maybe knock a few more turrets down. Don't have any outer turrets left to try and contend for, so it's tier two is only at this stage for them. But uh, Flyquest, sorry, have zero turrets, so Dignitas feeling pretty comfortable in this situation. And Flyquest have uh, some work to do. They're gonna get themselves further back into this game. Dignitas' gold lead has grown to almost 5,000 now. Yeah, and, and while it is harder and harder to kind of take out those inner turrets once the outers are down, as long as you're still controlling your opponent's jungle and kind of farming that down and balls. Uh, looking for a solo kill here on a Sunday, may have it. Needs a few more cooldowns. Flash from Sunday as the slice was barely coming back off cooldown. Will save himself there, but Balls is going to get some pressure down. Might even have a turret to take here, depending on what somebody wants to do with that TP. But another pick attempt here. Keen and Trim teaming up, finding flies wild there from Big. It looks like Dig again controlling this mid lane, and Balls is going to get some work done here on the bottom side, but. Someday gonna return to the lane with the Zonias and no need to TP just yet. Able to walk down happily. Yeah, he's gonna have to back off there. Was a little bit nervous about perhaps a roam down from the Lee Sin or someone like that. Uh, not gonna be able to take down that turret, but still getting a nice advantage for himself, forcing out the flash and the ultimate from Sunday. Uh, maybe can get something done in that 1v1 a little bit later because of that, but it is a lot harder with the Zonias now completed. You, know, you can see Bolt actually building a lot of damage early. We've seen this from almost all of the Bruiser fighter type champions, but Curious to see if Balls does go all the way in for a 1v1 item build with something like Clear to the Ruin King, but I think he'll probably opt more for your standard Titanic Black Cleaver. Has a Hex Trinket for his lane matchup, and then Cargo Stone Plates in there at some point. 
Yeah, and the Blade of the Rune King, while it is a, a strong 1v1 item, to me it's more of an item that you should build against tanks because you have that percentage health damage. Uh, so really utilizing that in combination with the percentage armor shred of the Black Cleaver to really kind of destroy tanks in that 1v1 against the Rumble, the kind of Blade of the Rune King type item, that 1v1 focus item really is going to be the Hex Shrinker. And that is a pretty greedy build if you want to say so, uh, because even just going for that means he's going to be squishy in the team fights, you know, not utilizing just the Titanic Hydra plus Black Cleaver. It's certainly going to be bonus. They're going uh, tanky misses. That was a pretty cool interaction. Elimination, though. Kick back by Shrimp, and that looks to be a kill almost over to Leah. You know, oh. try and cut him off. Keen wants it. And not going to get it. Not really a full commitment there from the team. You have to feel like they maybe could have picked up that kill you know, with a summoner coming out of Altec or, or someone like that, but they're right onto the Baron. Uh, just going to decide to have to turn here. You have to think. Oh, Baron is comes in. so low with the Infernal on the Mountain. They're going to try and get in, but it's too late already. Altec actually taking it down. Flyquist going to lose the big objective. Really nice from Dignitas. So they decide not to chase the kill. They just use the HP advantage that they have gotten from that. Go straight to the Baron. They burn it down very quickly with that Mountain and Infernal. And they are going to lose their mid lane turret, but Altec is already shoving out the side lane, soaking up that experience, soaking up that gold, and we'll have to back off now, but not going to be uh, in a very good spot here as FlyQuest, because Tristan is such a strong seizure that they could definitely be looking to take out some of these inner turrets. Nice dodge there from Altec, gets out from under Elimination's Q, and looks like with 2,000 gold spent, Altec's going to go ahead and uh, do some shopping. Rapid Fire Cannon should be on the way very soon, and like we said already, Balls has delayed his tankiness by going for that additional 1v1 lane-focused item, so Stun is going to be hurting everyone once his three items are completed, and Shrimp is just casually soloing the card trick. Yeah, there's nice just peaceful. no real armor on FlyQuest whatsoever. Yeah, there's cabbies on Balls, there's pieces of a dead man's on Moon, but uh, very soon Tristana is going to be three items. When, when she bases, she will be. And she's going to be shredding everyone. Yeah, shredding turrets too. Oh, nice Sonia. Great Sonia's there from Sunday. Blackfield's going to escort him out. Altec is still not shot, by the way, so Dignitas is getting maximum Baron duration instead. And he's 300 gold away from a full item completion, so he wants to get a turret. He wants to have that gold to buy up the full rapid fire. So they're pressuring down these mid lane and the bot lane. If he can just knock down one turret, he will have that buy he wants and then he can start to look to fight, and they should be able to get it on this wave. Yep, I'll take a few more shots, and there it is. Shrimp looking for the play, but doesn't quite get behind Flyquest. I actually burnt his flash, so able to keep himself safe, but he won't have it next time. Yep, and now he'll go right back to base. He will have that massive power spike. They're all going to go back at the same time, synchronizing those buys, playing around the fact that Altec wanted to stay on the map and get that. Very smart, but someday... Overstay, but it looks of things. Moon able to get that execute. Someday the one guy who kind of didn't really synchronize his base with the rest of the team does go down, but still Dignitas in a very good spot. Huge gold advantage. AD carry certainly in a, a very powerful spot here too, and just going to get run down. Doesn't have Flash, doesn't have Zonia. There's no real chance for him to get out from the position he put himself in. Yep, I get low from the Equalizer actually, but not enough to take him down. And like you said, just a minor setback there for Dig. Silly of someday to be in that spot, but not going to cost Dignitas too much here. They've kind of done all they really wanted to do, and still with 50 seconds left of Baron, I'll take able to get a fifth turret now for Dignitas. Yeah, it's very nice. I mean, getting that one kill may mean that Dignitas cannot push top to turret as well. You know, so that may have defended one for them, uh, but they're still definitely very, very down, and it's going to be hard. When you are this far down, they need to delay. They need to get high and turtle to this super strong point, and I honestly feel like at this point on balls, he should just be bailing out of a, a Titanic Hydra and just going pure tank. Like, you're too far behind, uh, I think, as a team, not even just individually, but as a team to really have that that matter. Yeah, it's obviously again. a matter of opinion. Yep, again, everything just delayed hit for fly quest. It's kind of the easy way to look at it. If nothing else, three items on the way, but still not there for high and total. Balls needs to be tankier. Moon is very far behind as far as total items go. I mean, Flyquests are down a lot of gold at this point. Yeah, and the problem with, with building damage this, this late in the game against this Tristana is Tristana is going to siege. They have very easy siege with this composition. You black shield up this long range AD carry who has three items, and who is going to be able to stand up to the Tristana in the team fight? Like, your only real hope if you're just going to build pure damage is bursting this guy out almost immediately. They need to find that initiation, but Morgana, very good at shutting that down. So we'll see if they can ever really have an answer for Altec. Well, Altec working on that last tier 2 turret. 
few more shots in. It does that black shield you mentioned, and easy as you like there for Dignitas. And even if Turtle gets very strong, if his front line is just getting absolutely shredded, he's not going to have the time he needs to kind of work through this composition that Dignitas has because this is you know, essentially five kind of damage dealers on, on Dignitas. They have no tank. They're all about uh, that threat. And it means that Wild Turtle is going to need a lot of time, a lot of safety to move forward and kind of take them all down. And that was the thing where we saw Dignitas. Yes, there was a vulnerability there perhaps having no real front line, but uh, that required them to get behind or stay even, and they've gotten very far ahead, kind of snowballing this game from the early learning phase, and now Altec with a QSS going to feel even safer. Dignitas approaching about 8,000 gold lead, and with another Infernal Drake on the way as that yeah. final one of this game. Feeling pretty good for Dig as they move towards the late game. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, they can set up full vision control around that in advance, look to really uh, force the issue there. Uh, we'll see if FlyQuest can get any picks. That's going to be a big way for them to delay and kind of get back into this game because uh, they will have a very good 5v5 on even terms, but Dignitas is just so far ahead right now. And these full damage compositions are really good from ahead uh, because your, your front line just does not actually live long enough uh, for it to really be relevant whatsoever. Yep, when you're playing catch-up the whole time, it feels pretty tough for the yeah. enemy team. Even just as far as itemization, it's like, what do you build? Well, I want to be able to 1v1, so I'm going to build the Titanic Hydra. But, you know, Keen is already on a Void Staff, so building MR isn't going to be feeling that great there. And you need all this armor to deal with this massive uh, Tristana. It's like, there's so many threats, and it pulls you in all these different ways. And uh, people often end up in a position where you cannot keep up your defensive itemization with the pacing that is uh, being pushed out here from the other team. No, and as soon as that happens for a tank, you feel, or a frontline champion, you feel close to useless. Yeah, I mean, even if you get like a Randwins to deal with Altec, well, you're going to get absolutely shredded by uh, both the AP threats. You know, top laner and the mid laner already have three items with a Void Staff, and they're going to absolutely blast balls whose only MR is uh, the extra. Well, FlyQuest getting their Void Staff for high, and that looks like a Rage Blade on the way for Mr. Turtle. To see, and that third item will be a big one. The Rage Blade is a huge power spike for Turtle. And if he can get that free time to really get those shots out, he will be able to kill these guys off very fast. He needs a lot of free time, though. Yeah, he definitely. And it's about the safety, too, right? Like, if he has a few seconds where he's not CC and he's free firing on one of these people, he will kill them. But will he get that time? Will he be able to actually have the space uh, to utilize his damage? That's, that's the biggest question. Can they feel well enough for him? And can he feel safe enough to move forward and, and kill it? Tough to win a TPS race versus this many threats. Dignitas us lining up 5v5 in the mid lane. Two major buffs about to spawn together. Infernal Drake up soon. Baron up now, actually. Dignitas going to threaten this one first. King going to cut him off. Dig might just start it. They are. Really good wall from King. Moon gets over, though. Oh, he actually got to a plan, I think. And now he's Last over the... Oh, oh King kicks him back out of it. In midair, and a great Baron secure for Dignitas. All right, that was stylish from Shrimp. Sword hops right out, kicks Moon away, and then cues back to execute that Baron. So, so well done there by Shrimp and Keen. You know, zoning them out and then making sure that's a guaranteed Baron. Now they're going to move over here, try to secure this Infernal, and Lemon is caught out, likely will be chased down. And then they're going to go right for that dragon. Ooh, ulti in range, going to force Lemonation's flash. Someday also has Equalizer, but not sure wants to come in for just a support. Lemonation is leading them on a grand adventure. This might not be really worth chasing Nebron for this long. I don't think you, you want that Infernal but, Dragon, uh, so. It's like... All right. Yeah, Shrimp's still going. I think it's all right. They did get the Infernal, or it looks like they will. At least. Shrimp not needed. Fyke was not able to be out on the map as Lemon Nation. Oh, no. Turtle's almost here. They can actually turn this around, perhaps. Oh, uh, Lemon! No, Turtle doesn't feel confident ah. actually move up into that play. I mean, Shrimp did still have his ultimate, so that is one thing that you really have to be wary of there. Uh, but Equalizer did go down, and here's the play. The team blocked out. Look at that. Kicks him out of the Blast Cone. The Q is already on the Baron. So just takes the second half of the Q. Q smite, finishes off the Baron. That was so smooth from Shrimp, and really, really well done. Kind of reminiscent of Karsa and some of the plays that he was making uh, at MSI, especially the their win against SKT. Uh, his Baron Spears were immaculate, and that's what we kind of saw there from Shrimp. Always fun to see top-level Lee Sin players do stuff. And that, that was no exception there for Shrimp as Dignitas back on the O. Baron buff up for two minutes longer, and Altec just finishes fourth damage item. So uh, 
turrets are gonna do real fast here after giving tanks a turret shot or two just for funsies. Yeah, at this point you're kind of praying for like a miracle shockwave or something. Uh, but FlyQuest have not really even felt comfortable attempting to have the fight. And they're just getting bled out from all sides. It gets very difficult when you're being corralled against a siege composition like this. Because Dignitas are playing it smart, and we'll see if they find the opportunity uh, to look for a play. Yeah, that does get chunked, but just going to move back in and behind the safety of his team. Something getting aggressed on, but the Black Shield there is going to, again, thwart any attempt at offense there for FlyQuest. And that was a Flash Cocoon, it looks like, I, I think, from Moon. Uh, that does get immune, so a nice Black Shield there coming out from Big. Able to keep him safe. And they're closing in on both sides, utilizing the Baron buff very well. Not risking anything, just chunking away at this turret. And now it's like, yeah, staying very... Oh, TP coming in from Balls. They're going to look for the fight now. This is the play they're trying to make. This is about all they can do. We'll see what Flyquist gets done here. Someday first caught out. He's going to go down before the zone is popped. It shouldn't get tagged by the end of the Glacial Fissure. Uh, I think they're still threatening its eyes, keeping them out of the way. Shrip dashing back towards Keen. He's going to regroup with the West of Dignitas. Just one kill there for FlyQuest, and they committed a lot for it. Yeah, it doesn't feel like enough. I mean, it's, it's good that they got the one kill. It may buy them a little bit of time here, but such a big minion wave crashing in from Dig. They already knocked down the top inhibitor. They're looking for this middle one, and Alltech is the main threat. Grim's done. Turtle going forward. Oh, no. Keen chunks him completely out there. Shockwave does nothing onto Big, but Big Locket there is going to maybe keep them all safe. Good wall from Keen. Oh, Alltech can just go forward now. Now again, FlyQuest doesn't really have anything else to do. I think it's exhausted. He's going to miss though. He's just going to keep running for a trip. Over to get Total Moon's going to go down to Altec, and there's the reset he needs. Another kill there to Lemon gets him yet another jump and high. He's going to get chased down by Keen. Altec not even needed. There's the ace, and that'll be game for Dignitas. Really nice one here from Dignitas in control pretty much the whole time. Very well played. Utilizing their advantage, they get the ace. They will send us to game number three. There we go. Finally got it at the end. Bulls did live for a little while longer, but wasn't really needed. And Dignitas able to knock down the turrets and take the Nexus and bring this one to a third and final game. Two Tristana games come out. Two Tristana victories. Both players looking really solid on the pick. Uh, this one, to me, was a lot about the jungle, though. I thought that Shrimp did such a good job you know, getting things done, especially the early control. Uh, that Big and Shrimp were able to establish in Moon's jungle, getting so much vision down, really taking control of that area and taking away so many camps, stealing away so many buffs. I felt that that was uh, what really allowed them the time uh, to kind of move ahead and, and take control of the game. I think so. And in general, this kind of felt like uh, a lot of what we've seen from Big and Tusk, solid early game, using again their strong jungler, their strong laners to get an advantage, and then intelligently snowballing. This is a team to me that when they were ahead, seemed to play the map very, very well. And, and it's kind of interesting because there, there is this discussion about, you know, someday on split pushers versus someday on more team fighters and, and team oriented picks. And uh, once again, you know, we see him perform very well on Jackson game one, but it does not work out. It feels like when someday can join the team, when he can make things happen for the team and, and kind of play more around that, Dignitas has been looking better in recent weeks, despite the fact that he plays very well individually on the picks. It doesn't feel like the team is often successful with split push. Maybe just not there yet, but for deep dive on how Dig tied that series, that's handed off to Dash and Mark. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Dignitas getting the victory here, bringing us to one and one on the series, pushing us to a game three. And I want to jump immediately onto what Azale was talking about uh, with Someday in the top lane, because he does have these standout carry performances or even individual performances on mm -hmm. carries, I should say, in losses. Whereas when you transition to the team fighters, Dignitas as a whole seems to find more success. It, it feels like whenever he's on those kind of split push hyper carries, they, they almost tunnel on being like, we have to get someday ahead. He's our win condition. And, right. and he's a good enough player that you can kind of let him get his own leads and help him out when he needs it. Right. But it, when he's on things like a Rumble or a Gragas, it feels like they play the map much more about what should be done versus like fo focus on getting someday ahead. And this time around, they draft a very standard team fight, team comp for the most part. Absolutely. And I like, uh, especially against FlyQuest, a team that who's not known for their mid to late game uh don't all in on this one three one comp where you know we saw in game one where if you lose that uh mid game and the game ends up even 30 minutes in you probably lose right this time around you can compete the entire game absolutely being able to stack up in that 5v5 was big and we talk about you know someday on carries versus someday on tanks now that does or team fighters that doesn't mean that when he's on team fighters you don't pay attention oh, to no. his lane because that's exactly what happened six minutes into the game dignitas gets
It's a 2-4-0 in the top lane. Great outplay by Sunday here on the uh, engage, living in the 2v1 until Shrimp shows up. Really intelligent the way he plays it. He doesn't uh, really ult for damage there. He ults to stop them from getting onto him, so they have to run through it. And either they don't do any damage to him, and he waits for his team to collapse, or they do run through it like what Moon did. He gets melted down, and then he's actually mm -hmm. able to pick that kill up before Lee Sin really even gets involved in the fight. Overall, so smart, and then he buys time, kites out the Renekton, and, and just that equalizer, it might look a little weird at first, but when you realize he's forcing them to cross over it to get onto him, it buys so much time and also does a lot of damage when they do make that decision to, ma to make the move on. Right, him. great collapse out of Shrimp, as well as Keen there at the end of the replay. You see him beating uh, uh, Oriana to the side lane, and so great responses from Dignitas there to help someday out in that top lane, get the early advantages, and then you can see there, that's just the beginnings of what is a beautiful looking gold graph mm -hmm. for Dignitas pushing forward. Uh, but with this squad, it's kind of a peculiar thing where they got that Baron in a very funky fashion where they kind of, uh, they took Lemonation down to like 10%. And then just force the Baron. And it does seem to some degree that Dignitas is still very Baron reliant in order to win their games. Yeah, and it's especially Barons that are not like super well set up and then they turn off and it's very clean. That one, to be fair, was a decent turn. They chunked out mm -hmm. Lemon. Uh, but the second time around, the 30 minute Baron, once again, they do it in front of all five people. You know, FlyQuest is completely alive. They force this situation. They get a Baron. Good on Shrimp being able to secure them, but it's not as clean as you see in some of the other top teams like an Immortals, TSM, or CLG, C9, where they'll turn off and kill people before going back, or they will just get so much vision control, they sit there and you walk into them, they're right. not even on the Baron. It feels like Dig is always on the Baron, always trying to melt it down and forcing these 50-50s that, you know, for the most part this season have worked out for them, but yeah. it's, it gets scary a little bit. Absolutely. Player of the game gonna go to Shrimp, though, this time around for that early jungle pathing, make sure that he does aid the laners that need help, mm -hmm. although his scoreline 4-2 and 4, I mean, first of all, it wasn't even a very bloody game, so none of the scorelines looked incredible. There were some deathless members on Dig, but it was that early action from Shrimp that let them have those leads to close out the game. It was, I think, five kills at 30 minutes when they got their second Baron of the game and you only killed five people. Both times the Barons went down without anyone dead. That puts a little bit of pressure on your jungler. Make sure that that's going to be a secured smite. So mm -hmm. uh, good job on him getting those. And like you said, that early skirmish in the top side is really kind of what broke this game open for Dignitas. Uh, what else do you want to talk about here, though, on Dignitas? Because it is kind of a peculiar thing where they're sitting at that five and three, still very much at the top half of the standings, and yet... We're sitting here going, it feels like they can not They can only win with the Baron, right? They mm -hmm. can't win when they put their top lane carry on carries, you know, who is, in a lot of people's books, the number one top laner in the league. Why is it that they only win in one fashion? It is very surprising, because even if you look at game one, Keen on LeBlanc was having a great game. We were getting ready to hand him player of the game. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, I actually kind of forgot about that. That We were both looking, and we are going, oh my goodness, like someday here you go, he's playing well with the Jacks, but Keen is stepping up. This is usually the formula that nets them a victory. And this is something that it feels like they just can't win when Keen is the primary carry. We saw last year, uh, last split, excuse me, he had some like 9-0 Azir game. They end up losing that one as well right and so whether it's due to his inconsistency in late game which is something that you were critical of this both this team's other carries in when they had laud as mm -hmm. the starter uh, as well as keen they just felt like if it wasn't someday in a position to carry that's why they were really inconsistent and that's why it feels like when you know someday is on a carry they all in on him and kind of overforce around him now on the flip side flat quest here taking the loss in game two what would you like to see out of them in game three because once again they built a pretty standard composition here you got plenty of damage threats but a solid front line and it speaks to what you would imagine would be a very FlyQuest-centric comp, but it didn't work out. It feels like they're in free fall a little bit, where mm -hmm. if they go all in on the early game, they don't skirmish quite well enough to build a big lead, and then it falls out of control, and then late game, you know, you've all leaned on right. this early game idea. If they go super late, they just lose out early and can't climb back. Yeah, it, it's this kind of situation where there seems like there's some fundamental problems with this team, and if, if you want to all in and try and cheese out, a, you know, a victory, I know you hate that term, cheese out, but all, all in on an early game strategy, you know, that might be a little bit more successful right now, just if you can actually get a big lead and really snowball it hard but uh, it does feel like they're up against the wall because in, the, in the, the first game they won because they had the better team fighting team and dig stalled out right exactly so I maybe this uh, this next game will rely heavily on champion select and mm -hmm. which strategies both teams reach for team dignitas have brought this series to a game three so meet us back here after the break to see who takes it FlyQuest or dignitas we'll see you soon